Okay, so now we're talking about using trial and error to solve algebraic equations. Trial and error meaning try something out. If there's an error, we try again until we find a solution. This is just our next step in trying to solve algebraic equations. So if you haven't taken this class, please write down um, each slide, starting with this target. Pause when you need to. Now here are a couple examples. First one, 4x minus 13 equals 23. We've said before that the number right next to the variable means multiplication. So this is just like saying 4 times what number minus 13 will get us 23. So with trial and error, we just want to kind of plug in a number, try it out, and if it works, we're good. If not, we'll try again. So for example, let's see if 4 is a solution. Now when we try numbers for our variables, you want to plug it in like we just did there, into parentheses, because that will mean multiplication. So 4 with an 8 in parentheses, I'm just guessing 8 for now to see if it's correct, but because it's multiplication and we can no longer use the x symbol for multiplication, because sometimes the x will be a variable, this letter that's an unknown quantity, an unknown value that we're trying to figure out. So for now, when we substitute a number in to check for a solution, we put it in parentheses. Now what I would do is just rewrite the rest of the equation just like it is, and then just start doing the math to see if you have a correct solution. 4 times 8, 32. We still have to subtract 13, and we're trying to reach 23, so it's a balanced equation. Now, that's just not true. 32 minus 13 will get us 19, not 23. So in this case, the solution we guessed of 8 is too small. We know it's too small because it was 19 as a solution, and we're trying to reach 23. So let's guess 9 as our next option to solve for x here. Okay, 4 times 9, 36, minus 13, and now we found our target. Basically, in algebra, we want one side of the equation to equal the other side. 36 minus 13 is 23, so the final answer, if this was like a test question, you would say x equals 9. Okay, let's look at the next equation, 3x minus 5 equals 16. This, in the same way, is like 3 times what number minus 5 equals 16. Well, let's just plug in a number and check. Maybe we'll check, I don't know, let's check 8. 3 times 8, plug it in with parentheses, in place of the x, minus 5 equals 16. Now, if you're taking these notes, you could take these examples that are maybe a guess and check, and they might be wrong, but at least at minimum, once we have the correct solution, Please put that into your notes as a couple of good examples. Okay, back to this bottom one. Let's do 3 times 8. That's going to be 24. Minus 5. It's not going to get a 16. That'll be 19. So in this case, our guess was too high because the number was bigger than the number on the right-hand side. 19 is bigger than 16. So I'm going to guess a smaller number. I'm going to think 3 times 7 minus 5. So I'm guessing that my x is 7. I do the math, 3 times 7 is 21, minus 5 is 16, so we have a solution, x would equal 7. Okay, with this trial and error method, we're building towards this step that involves inverse operations. There'll be a lesson coming on that soon, but there'll be a step-by-step -step method for solving these equations that'll ensure accuracy without a guess and check. But let me tell you, this guess and check method, this trial and error, will really kind of help us understand the steps involved when we start using something called inverse operations, okay? <clears throat> Here's another one if you want to try on your own. There's not quite, um, you know, I was going to say there's not quite independent work for this, but there is. So you can try that one on your own, but really, um, when you, if you did not do this in class, you were absent or anything like that, this is what needs to be in your notes. Um, the pages are there, the examples are there, or the, the ones I want you to do are there. Um, so please put the questions and the answers. And the challenge, I know it says challenge, but I would like everybody to try that challenge if you haven't already. 
I do want to just make one more note to this slide. This is more of just a reminder. We talked about this, but this is very important. So I'm just trying to get into your heads to make sure we don't forget. The top equation, 4x equals 12. We are thinking 4 times what number equals 12. Again, when we have that number right next to the variable, there's no mathematical symbol there, and we're going to assume multiplication every time. The bottom equation here, 4 plus x equals 12, is a very different equation, because now we're looking at addition. 4 plus what number is going to equal 12? So we see our top equation, we have a solution of 3, because 4 times 3 is 12. Our bottom equation, you're looking at a solution of 8, because 4 plus 8 will give us 12.